There's a wonderful shop in Tokyo, in Ginza, called Toyo, which I go to, which sells stationery. It's four stories full of extraordinary things, some quite sensible things, but these two staplers, uh, which I picked up there, both show very interesting properties, which I haven't seen in any stapler in, in, in the West. The first one, the black one, uh, will simply make a staple on a piece of paper. Nothing remarkable, except that every staple I've ever come across, when you look at the underside, always has considerable bowing to the to the metal pieces. They're never absolutely flat. In fact, I always end up with a pair of pinchy pliers and going dap, dap with them. This one, on the other hand, automatically staples absolutely flat. And I would never need to uh, put a pair of pliers to that, that staple. It's an absolutely flat staple. And it's a brilliant idea. Why on earth every staple isn't like this? I, I can't think. They've always made these ones with a, with, a, with a big bow to it. And it catches on your hand, too. This one won't. So, brilliant. The other one is a more remarkable one. When you have a, a little booklet like this, when you're trying to uh, staple it together, you need to do some staples along the lengths here. Well, sometimes you can have a very long reach one. Um, and I, I don't think I've ever had one. So, but this one here will do it, even though when you're coming in like this, it, it clearly is, is not going to work. But look what happens. This piece swivels like that. And when it does that, then you can go exactly in the middle of the crease there and make your staple. And it appears there. And do another one here. Now, isn't that ingenious? Isn't that ingenious? Extraordinary. Again, why it's never been thought of in the West, I don't know. But I think that, and of course it'd be used as an ordinary staple as well, but I think that's, that's just a very, very fine bit of design work.